Okay, we will construct a labor market model where we measure the real wage on our vertical axis and unemployment on the horizontal axis. We also have a wage setting relationship and a price setting relationship. And then we identify the natural rate of unemployment. Now we will start with the wage setting relationship. Now what a wage setting relationship tells us is how nominal wages are determined. Now it's there we put nominal wages and we're going to identify three factors. The one is the expected price level as a factor and unemployment, unemployment rate, which is measured on this axis here, and institutional factors where we use the symbol Z to indicate that. Now let's start with uh, the expected price level. The reason why the price level is part of wage bargaining is that Labour is not interested only in the nominal wage. We are aware of the fact that what is important is the real wage. Now, the nominal wage is the amount of wage you get at the end of the month. The real wage determines how much goods and services you can buy. So what Labour does is it, it bargains in terms of the nominal wage, but it desires or targets a real wage. This is called the bargain real wage or the target real wage or the desirable real wage. So, but when Labour bargains for this real wage, they're not sure what is the price level. That information will only become available later. So they have some expectations about the price level. Now what we're going to do is to sort of simplify and say, let's assume the expected price level is equal to the actual price level. The question then is, how does changes in this price level impact on the real wage? Now, if you remember now, the real wage will be the nominal wage divided by the price level. Let's assume the nominal wage is 100 and the price level is 50. And that means you actually can buy, say, two baskets of goods. If this um, price level increases in the economy, let's say it goes from 50 to 60, there's your increase in the price level, then you will buy less goods and services with that. Probably something like 1.6 instead of two baskets. Now, in order to get to the same real wage, labor will then ask for a, or bargain for a high a increase in the nominal wage. So what we can say is, if the price level increases, then we can expect the nominal wage to increase as well. Now the opposite is also true. If there is for some reason a decline in the general price level, we can then expect a decline in the nominal wage demands or bargained nominal wage. So this is then how the, the price level impacts on the nominal wage. Now we can look at unemployment. Now here the argument is that Unemployment influences the bargaining position of labor. And what we say is, the higher the unemployment, the less bargaining position, or the lower is the bargaining position of labor. That is because if you lose your job, it's going to be difficult for you to find another job if there's high unemployment. It also means from the firm's position that high unemployment means you can easier replace a worker. So once they fire someone, they can replace him, with, him or her with somebody else. So there is the general thing is that an increase in unemployment will decrease the bargaining position and you can sort of expect then a decline in the wage, nominal wages. And just know that this is what we measure on this axis. Now the opposite is also true. If there's an increase in of a decrease in unemployment, that will increase bargaining position and you get then an increase in the wage demands or the bargained nominal wage. This factor here is the institutional factors. This is where we measure all the other things that can influence the nominal wage. That can be things like the minimum wage 
and we can expect that the higher the minimum wage, the higher will be the nominal wages in the economy. It can also be because of the reservation wage that people have. It can also be the, the results of unemployment benefits and things like labor laws and regulations. And there is also uh, the, the case of the, how bargaining takes place, collective bargaining as opposed to individual bargaining. All those factors might have an influence on the nominal wage. So what we end up here is to say, well, between the price level and the nominal wage, there's a positive relationship. The higher the price level, the higher will be the nominal wage. Between unemployment and nominal wages, there's a negative relationship. In other words, the higher unemployment, the lower is the nominal wage. And this factors can then either increase or decrease it depending on what happens with those institutional factors. So we can now write our wage equation as the wage, nominal wage is a function of the price level, unemployment, institutional factors. And here we can indicate it's a positive and there it's a negative relationship. So this is the basic idea behind your wage setting curve.